What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Games We Play podcast. My name is Brian Brindley. I'm your host. It has been a while since we've been back here, but my work schedule has been absolutely insane. Uh, as some of you know, I have a job, an internship, and I am a full-time student. So clearly, I don't have any time for anything, let alone doing this podcast. But when there's inspiration that strikes me and I have the time, I'll always sit down and bang out a little podcast for you guys. So Thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe and share it with your friends. But enough of that plugging. Let's get into the content. Today we're going to talk about uh, three things. And the first thing we're going to talk about is the Thursday night football debacle that took place last night. So I'm recording this on Friday, November 15th. Uh, and here's my timeline of the Miles Garrett incident. Uh, I work the night shift at my job so i went to work at about the beginning of the third quarter i want to say and the browns were in total control um there wasn't really much i think to write home about at that point uh there was questions of targeting i'm not sure if that cropped up before or after i went to work i just remember seeing that notification on my phone when i went to the bathroom really quick Uh, And then I didn't check my phone for the next few hours because work got really busy. But then I go on my lunch and I go and look at my phone and my fantasy football group chat is blown up, which is pretty, it's a pretty regular occurrence, especially when there's a game going on. It's usually them talking about the game and uh, might divulge into different arguments about different players. Uh, But I look at my notifications and I see... Uh, something about brawl at end of Steeler at uh, end of Thursday night football. And when I think of brawls in football, I, I, n- I normally think of like a big pile up and people shoving each other and you know after like a hard hit on like a sideline, for example. A lot of times what you'll see is there'll be a nasty hit on a sideline. Somebody that's on the bench for one of the team that sideline they're on will get in somebody's face. People will start pushing and shoving. Maybe a couple of punches are thrown here and there. But what I did not expect to see was one of the most violent moments I've ever seen during a football game. Now, for context, uh, I played football for four years. And there was only one fight when we were in high school, and I wasn't involved. I was on the bench at the time, and it was on the other sideline. Um, But... That the thing with the helmet is, and I know a couple people have brought it up, especially former players. This kind of stuff happens in practices sometimes, especially on like a team that's either struggling really, usually on a team that's struggling or a team that's trying to push themselves before a big game. You will de- you'll see that you'll see players get into fights, and I've even seen a player in practice swing a helmet, and it it didn't hit the other guy. He didn't take the guy's helmet off and hit him with the helmet. It was his own helmet, and he hit him on, like, the shoulder pad or something like that. And they both went and cooled off, and it was all cool afterwards. They, like, dapped up afterwards and everything. Got a feeling it's not going to happen between Miles Garrett and Mason Rudolph, but, you know, um, that's my experience with that kind of fight. Uh, So from what I can tell happened, and I'll pull up the footage just so that we can kind of break it down piece by piece. But from what I can tell... uh, it, it's so it seems as you look at the footage you're looking and at the first replay all you see after the screen pass that ends the game and keep in mind this is the end of the game like this is like for all intents and purposes this is over there's eight seconds left on the clock at the end of the play i don't know why the steelers are still trying to like i get it i know that when you're losing even if there's not a chance in hell that you're gonna win that you're supposed to I guess for the integrity of the game, you're supposed to try and um, you're just supposed to try and get points, even though you're backed up on your own 17 yard line and you're down by two touchdowns and there's 11 seconds on the clock and running a screen isn't going to get you anything. But, you know, that's besides the point. So the screen pass is completed. And you see that Miles Garrett ran completely untouched to the quarterback. It's a screen pass, and he is the weak side defensive end. 
So their main concern is getting out to the other side so that they can block people on the outside. DBs, they can get a next level block on a backer that's running over. So Miles Garrett just gets Mason Rudolph. And I believe, is that Pouncey right there? I believe that's Pouncey that is holding his hands up in the air, kind of like, what the hell? Because Miles Garrett is, he's not like, so it's it's kind of up for interpretation. In a normal situation, what he's doing right here, how he's kind of just like rubbing his head into the ground and getting back up, and how he's just kind of like rubbing it in, if that's a regular play earlier in a game where it's close or, you know, it's like the second quarter, I think you're not making much of that. Maybe like a lineman will be like, hey, watch yourself, and you'll jabber jaw at each other a little bit, but I don't think it turns into this. The context, though, this game is over. He had an unimpeded hit on the quarterback. You already got your licks in. Uh, you're winning the game by 14 points. Like, there's just – it's just – it's it's kind of bush league, and I know that that's I think that's the quote that uh, Mason Rudolph gave and said that it's bush league. Uh, I agree with that. What transpires next is I don't even know what to call it. Disgusting is the main word that comes to my mind. Um. So upon further review, after this kind of mushing and <laughs> mushing is a weird word for it, but I guess it's what it is. Basically, after Miles Garrett's kind of like rubbing it in mush in a little bit uh mason rudolph gets pissed rightfully so i'd say uh and it looks like he tries to take his helmet off mason rudolph tries to take miles garrett's helmet off first um now if you've ever worn a helmet you know that when somebody pulls on it it hurts i remember when i was playing uh, like if a coach would like grab you by the face mask and pull you'd be like ow like it hurts your neck Especially if they go like this, and you could break somebody's neck doing that. Obviously, you're not going to do it in this situation, especially with a professional football player. Like, they're pretty well adapted to wearing a helmet at this point, and they know what to do with their neck, how to contort it, and how it should and shouldn't contort. And I don't think Mason Rudolph's trying to break Miles Garrett's neck. I think he's just trying to stand up for himself because where I will defend Mason Rudolph in this is you. I don't blame him for defending himself in that he's not going to he said I'm not going to let myself get bullied. Miles Garrett's clearly trying to bully you there and I would have been okay. I would have been totally fine with it if Mason Rudolph just like shoved him off and even got in his face a little bit. The tugging on the face mask thing is a little bit like I'm not cool with that because you can seriously hurt somebody like that. Um anyway, so there's a little bit of a scuffle. Uh there's a little bit of a scuffle, and a couple of Steelers linemen come over. Uh, Marquise Pouncey, and I can't remember who the other guy was. Let me see if I could find it in the article. Um, oh, Larry Ogun Ogunjobi. Oh no, that's that's the that's the Cleveland uh, D lineman who we will get into because that was that was the most bush league thing in this entire incident, and I don't think a lot of people are talking about it because it's not a flashy play, but like come on dude anyway i'm sorry i'm jumping all over the place the main point is they get back up on their feet miles garrett has mason rudolph's helmet in his hand because he's a monster of a human being and he could just peel that off like it's nothing mason rudolph is still going after him he's getting in his face kind of trying it looks i think he's trying to like grab his jersey or something so he talks to him like basically like gets up in his face uh he has linemen with him protecting him like, if you look at the screenshot where the actual incident takes place, there's two Steelers linemen. Oh, my God. The ref's face in this picture is absolutely hilarious. I'm going to have to crop that out because that is super funny. <laughs> I'll, I'll share that with you guys. Um, and Miles Garrett just, like, literally just over the top. Just think. And he, he got Mason Rudolph, but he got him with the bottom of the helmet where it's the padding. Uh, so... In a very in a very weird sense like crisis averted even though you hit somebody with the helmet you hit him with the least effective part of the helmet and then of course rightfully so pouncy and i'm trying to see who this guy is who's the other guy let me see i can't even see his name 
number 66. And yeah, when Miles Garrett pulls him up by his helmet, like when he takes the helmet off, he's like pulling up and lifting him up, which is needless to say, not very cool. Um, but also really dangerous. So I get why Mason Rudolph is mad. So helmets pulled off. They get up 66 in his face. Hits him with the helmet. And Pouncey just starts wailing on him. Kicks him in the head. DeCastro. That's who it is. Um, so Pouncey and DeCastro are protecting their quarterback as they should. As you're taught to as a lineman. Man, he really got lucky that that didn't hit him worse, man. When you look at it in slow motion, it looks nasty. So then Mason Rudolph gets hit in the head. He throws his hands up. And he's like what is like what you hit me with the helmet which let's 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 look at the tail of the tape on this one let's see mason rudolph height and weight let's see let's see what we got so mason rudolph is six foot five 236 miles garrett height and weight so the tail of the tape. Act, ooh, hold, oh my God. Miles Garrett weighs more. Mace Rudolph's actually taller than him. That's interesting. But they also play very different positions. Miles Garrett's a freak athlete. Just look up Miles Garrett Gym and you will see some of the craziest things you have ever seen in your life. He's a strong human being. He should not need to utilize a helmet to fight mason rudolph if he wants to that's ridiculous it's dangerous it looks so bad for the nfl that's this is gonna play on national tv regardless of sports or not this is a huge issue for the nfl and clearly they took issue with it miles garrett suspended indefinitely that was announced this morning which, for all intents and purposes, actually is kind of soon. They usually kind of wait on this stuff to worry about, you know, like, making sure they have the time to talk about it and all this stuff. But clearly, the NFL was furious at what took place and how it's reflected on their brand because they acted quickly. So let's get into the most Bush League part of the play. I What is his name? O. O. Ogan Juby. Ogan Juby is kind of just like hovering around the play. I think he's like there for Miles support, Miles Garrett like support and backup. Uh, and then, so after Mason Rudolph is has been hit in the head with the helmet, and he kind of backs away, he throws his hands up and he's like, "What do you want me to do?" So, anyways, Miles Garrett hits him with the helmet. Mason Rudolph kind of falls back and is like, "Dude, what the heck?" And then Ogan Juby just kind of like, boop. Does he, where is it? Where is it? Let me find it. Let me find it. Oh, in the back. Oh, he comes up to the back of Mason Rudolph and just kind of like uh, shoves him to the ground. Mason Rudolph's not in the fight anymore. He's talking to the ref, being like, yo, what the hell? And then Ogan Juby's just like, meh. And just knocks him to the ground. I'm like, dude, why are you doing that? So he got a, ba he got a, I think a one game suspension. Yes. They suspended him as well. And, the, and okay. They suspended Marquise Pouncey, the Steelers offensive lineman, which I think is the wrong decision. I understand that escalation is bad i understand that they don't want players to escalate when these situations occur but your job as a lineman you are taught as a lineman if your quarterback is in trouble regardless of what is happening you need to protect them and mason rudolph may have quote unquote escalated first because miles garrett you know like did his rubbing it in and all that but mason rudolph is the first one to make a move that i would I would say is, I guess, outside of football. Because Miles Garrett, even though his decision and his, you know, his actions were excessive, they were within the boundaries and the parameters of football. Trying to take off somebody's helmet is not in the parameters of football. It's explicitly illegal in the sport of football. 
So I and Marquise Pouncey got three games, which I think is ridiculous. I think he probably should have been fined, but I don't think he should have been suspended because. Oh, with all intents and purposes, all he did was try to restrain Miles Garrett and protect his quarterback. Miles Garrett escalated the situation to a point that it had to a level of 11. And after that, after his quarterback got hit in the head with a helmet, he threw punches, and then when he fell to the ground, he gave him a kick. Is the kick excessive? Yeah. I don't think the punches are. If somebody hits your quarterback with a helmet and you punch them, I'm not going to I'm not going to be off of your side. So, should he probably have been fined for the kick? Yeah. But should he have been suspended for three games? Absolutely not. I think that's ridiculous. I think that Miles Garrett should have been suspended for the rest of the season, absolutely. And I think that Ogunjobi should be suspended for a game. Because what's the just on the basis of how bush league that action is? Pushing a quarterback from behind when you're a defensive lineman after your teammate hit them in the head with a helmet and they're pleading with the ref and they're out of the fight? Like, what are you doing? What are you thinking? So, what does this mean for the NFL? Um, It means that Miles Garrett is probably going to be suspended for the... is going to be suspended for the rest of this year and I would... I would be surprised if he doesn't get at least a couple games the next season as well. The NFL is going to want to send a message after this. The Them acting so quickly lets me know that they are on top of this and they are furious about it. And I also want to give a quick aside to Baker Mayfield's comments afterwards. A lot of people are talking about how that won't play well in the locker room, that you defend your guys even if they're wrong. I agree to that to an extent. When your friend gets in a fight at the bar and they might be in the wrong, back them up and then afterwards be like, yo, what you did was not cool. You were in the wrong. But when you are the face of a franchise like Baker Mayfield is, you you have to understand that when you are a franchise quarterback for an NFL team, you are in a very, very special situation. You are the face and you are – you basically – carry the torch of the brand for your team and that game was ugly on multiple accounts there was people saying that the browns dbs were targeting the steelers wide receivers helmet to helmet hits uh there was a lot of questionably dirty plays throughout the game and it culminated in this and i think that baker kind of understood that this is a bad look for us despite winning the game this is a horrible look for the cleveland browns and what a shame because this team has been bad for so long, but they have been so easy to root for in the face of being so bad. It's almost just like a charity case in a way. And I, I hate to use that phrase because it kind of diminishes their, you know, it's it hurts your pride to be viewed as a charity case. But it's like, come on, man, we want to see this team succeed. We saw how important it was when the Cavs won for the city of Cleveland. Like, it'd be cool to see the Browns have success for the city of Cleveland as well, too. But... This is a horrible look. I think Baker Mayfield's comments were correct. Uh, I'm sure that the concerns that it won't play well in the locker room are valid. I think that some people won't appreciate that in Cleveland's locker room. But at the end of the day, man, you're the face of the franchise. You have to address it. And anybody on that field, what's he going to say? Oh, I didn't see what happened. Like, come on, man. Like, get real. Let's, Let's be realistic. Everybody saw what happened. Everybody knows. Even everybody knows it's disgusting his teammates know it's disgusting i would much rather have a leader on my team who's honest than somebody who protects i I understand protecting people at all costs but sometimes some things are so egregious that you just got to call it what it is so i don't disagree with baker mayfield's comments at all i think they were spot on um, I hear the concerns that they'll play poorly in the locker room, and they might very well do that, but I don't think that they should. I think that if you're thinking rationally as a human being, and if you're thinking logically as a football player, that you shouldn't take any issue with Baker Mayfield's comments. The only thing that you would have against it is the code. The code. Okay. Did your player break the code, the brotherhood of the NFL, by hitting another opposing quarterback over the head with a helmet? Yeah, so... 
the code kind of drops when you are when you are committing assault with a deadly weapon on a football field. That's just my take, though. Uh, would love to hear your guys' opinions. Do you think that Marquise Pouncey should have got suspended? Do you think that Miles Garrett suspension is proper? Do you think it's what do you think it's going to be? Because technically, it's just indefinitely right now. What do you think it's going to end up being? Would love to hear your guys' uh, comments down below, and I would I'll respond to them obviously, and maybe we'll talk about it in another video. Um, second topic of the day. Uh, I really quickly want to address the Colin Kaepernick uh, workout that's happening this Saturday. So tomorrow, uh, there are, I believe, 11 teams that are committed to attend on that list. I saw the Patriots. I saw the Cardinals. I saw the uh, Redskins. Uh, there's, there's, like I said, there's 11 teams that have committed to coming. I'm sure there will be more that come. Um, and I'm very conflicted about this because I'm glad that Colin Kaepernick is getting a chance to showcase his skills. Here's my history with Colin Kaepernick. I grew up a Seattle Seahawks fan, so obviously I was not a fan of the man for a very long time because he was always a pain in the neck for me to watch my team play against. And then this whole kneeling for the national anthem thing happened, and at first... I was very opposed to it. My family is very patriotic. My dad is a veteran. Uh, but the more I listened to what he was saying, the more I understood that this is a much more nuanced action than the media, especially at first, took it as. So at this point, I've said in the past on this podcast that I think that a lot of what happens around Kaepernick in the NFL is very PR smoke and mirrors. The NFL does not want to deal with this in any meaningful way, I don't believe. Um, and I understand why. It's a tricky situation. And I, I, I push back on people that say that, for example, there's people that are like, well, Nike stock went up when Kaepernick became the face of their – um, marketing movement and I was like yeah but that's a very different situation than an NFL team picking up Colin Kaepernick to play on their team because football demographics are different from just the overall Nike demographic um, you kind of have to understand who buys tickets to football games usually older richer people who are more likely to be against Colin Kaepernick's stance on police brutality and the way that he chooses to protest it but that's just all preamble to this. I think that this workout is a total PR smoke and mirror move for a couple of reasons. Um, it's why at this point in the season? Like we are getting into the playoff push where teams are already solidified in what their rotations and lineups are. They already have made tweaks to their offensive adjust to their offensive schemes. And like yes, has there been quarterback have there been quarterback injuries this year? Yeah, but like why wouldn't you set this up for earlier in the year then? Those injuries have existed all year. It's not like this past week there was a giant influx of quarterbacks who got hurt or all that stuff. It's it's just not true. But the, the biggest reason that I think that this feels so disingenuous is disingenuous or disingenuous? I always forget which one it is. Um, the timing of it. Why a Saturday? Talent evaluators are who attend these kind of workouts. Teams send talent evaluators, uh, scouts, whatever you want to call them. Why on Saturday? Because... What happens on Saturday? College football is played. That's weird, right? So you're going to have your guys, your best scouts and talent evaluators, probably at college football games because they're younger. They will require less money to sign when you draft them. And 
you can kind of mold them into your image more. When you take on a Colin Kaepernick, somebody that has already A, been established in the NFL, and B, has this has this around him, this air of controversy around him, it's a lot to deal with, man. I understand why some teams have trepidation when they look at signing him. Even if they need him, you have to weigh... As a business owner, unfortunately, you have to weigh that there are some people that will vote with their wallet against his message, just no matter how much you agree with the message. But that's but it taking place on Saturday, like you, like you're gonna you're gonna just let him work out in front of, for lack of a better term, your B team of scouts. Because that's who they're going to send. They know what Colin Kaepernick's good at. They're literally just going to send somebody to check and see, is he athletic? Yeah. Has he been working out? Yeah. Can you still throw the football? Yeah. But what kind of next level stuff are you really going to get from like a, I, I assume like a two, three hour workout? Like it, it, to me, it's just like, why, why are you doing this? Because you don't care. The, like the NFL is trying to cover itself very clearly whether or not there is a giant conspiracy theory from all the owners to collaborate against Colin Kaepernick playing in the NFL I'm sure that's the case for many of them I'm sure that a majority of the NFL owners do not want Colin Kaepernick back in the league but just like if that's the case man just ignore him like this this feels so this feels like they're just placating to him and i just it's kind of disgusting to me because for me for example the Seahawks could absolutely use Colin Kaepernick as a backup quarterback he fits into their system he's very similar to how Russell Wilson works in his skill set and i remember when he worked out for Seattle i was like huh I actually would love for Colin Kaepernick to play for Seattle. I would love to see him as a backup, which is crazy because I despised Colin Kaepernick when he played for the 49ers because of how good he was playing against my team. But for the NFL to put this together like this, and it just feels so hap-dash. It feels so thrown together. Like, oh, here's a bone. Can you stop whining? And it's like, that's not the point. And now you've set him up to where, okay, now he hasn't played in the NFL for two years. Cool. So when he comes back, he's going to be missing some stuff. And he's going to have to get his sea legs back a little bit. And will they just throw him in there to, like, let him sink, basically, so that they can be like, see, it was the talent. That's why we didn't put him back in there. It was the talent. His performance was falling off, and that's why he wasn't playing in this league. And to me, it's just... I wish him the best. I really, really want him to succeed in the face of all this. I don't think it's going to work. I don't think a team is going to pick him up. Unfortunately, I feel really bad about it. And I want to make very clear, when I say that, like, when I tell the NFL, why are you doing this at all? It's not to be like, oh, just, like, let it go. Leave it alone. He doesn't, like, don't give him the chance. I want him to have a chance, but I wanted him to have a chance when he could make something of it, when he could make something more of it, when he had more likely of a chance of making something of it. He could still succeed. And I hope that he does, but you had ample opportunities to give him chances to succeed before this, and you didn't do it. And why now? It just the timing doesn't make sense to me from a granular from a granular granular level of what day of the week it is to how long it's been since he's played in the NFL. The timing makes no sense to me. And despite that, I still wish him the most, and I wish him success. And okay. Let's switch gears and let's talk about probably the most, I'd say the most interesting story of the week, the last week or so. So the Houston Astros have been accused in a article on The Athletic, I believe. Ken Rosenthal wrote it. Ken Rosenthal and somebody else wrote it. I will credit it in the link in the description. Um... I'm reading from a uh, CBS Sports article, uh, kind of 
given the bullet points of it, not the full breakdown, but just the bullet points of it. The athletic article, knowing their writing is probably extremely detailed. I don't have an athletic subscription, uh, so I am not going to read it. Um, but so looking at this CBS Sports article, I'm going to give you the bullet points. And these, this is paraphrased slash quoted from this, so I will link this article in the description down below as well. As noted in the introduction, the Astros use a camera positioned in center field to steal signs during games. Team personnel would watch the feed in a hallway between the clubhouse and the dugout and would relay what was coming by hitting a garbage can. You can watch it play out for yourself here. The videos are... I had to wear headphones to hear it because it's so subtle because the crowd noise is there. Um, but you can very explicitly hear when it's going to be an off-speed pitch. So basically... Uh, catcher gives their sign. There is a camera in center field. Somebody's watching on like maybe a TV or an iPad in the back, uh, in the little like hallway between clubhouse and dugout, that little skinny hallway. Um, and they would have a garbage can and I assume maybe a bat and they would just like dink, 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 dink. So that the batter knows, okay, off speed pitch. So I could sit back on it. Now, when do they do it? This is important because these allegations are stemming from 2017. The Astros won the World Series in 2017. So the timing of this is very important. Drellich is the other guy who wrote the piece, by the way, for The Athletic. Um, in Drellich and Rosenthal's piece, they note that a source said it was likely too loud to use the garbage can system during the World Series and that they weren't able to enact the system for away games. Obviously, they can't do it for away games because they don't have the feed. It's not their ballpark, all that stuff. And it's important to note that they had a better road record, I believe, that year than they did in home record. Um, but still, it doesn't excuse the cheating if it happened. Um, now, Tyler Stafford of Baseball Prospectus found evidence that the Astros used their system throughout the 2017 season. Meanwhile, Reddit user Ryan Mole 1089 posted video suggesting the Astros used a similar system in the 2017 World Series, but with a whistle in place of the banging. And the important thing about that is the Yankees and the Astros got in a shouting match this postseason when they played in the ALCS over whistle over a whistling noise. So. It seems like it was known that there was a system going on and there was obviously accusations kind of holding in the head beforehand of cheating and uh, the Red Sox got caught using an Apple watch to steal signs in 2017 as well. Um, sign stealing happens. It's a part of the game. It's an unfortunate reality of the game that people will cheat to get ahead, uh, but it is a part of the game nonetheless. Um, so the MLB is going to be talking to Carlos Beltran uh, Alex Cora, AJ Hinch, and a couple of other, uh, you know, Astros executives and coaches, uh, just to kind of see who was behind it all. Because I believe they said that uh, Beltron and Cora were like paramount to the operation, so that could be potentially bad news for the new New York Mets manager and Carlos Bench Beltron and Alex Cora, who is currently the skipper for the Red Sox. Um, let's see, and yeah, that's the main crux of the article. So what are my thoughts on this? Um, the videos are wild, and it's kind of dead obvious. And there's – who is it? Oh, I saw it on Rich Eisen's show. Uh, one of the Astros, I think like assistant GMs or general manager, some, somebody, some higher up, uh, was interviewed at a – was kind of in a media scrum immediately after this broke and was talking about it. And he just sounded like a kid that just got caught stealing, man. He was – well, uh, I uh, we don't want to make obviously any any uh, specific accusations or comments, and we're gonna wait for the details and all. And it's like, whew, not a good look for the organization, absolutely at all. Um, what should happen? Draft picks probably taken away from the Astros and money compensation. What are you gonna really do? Like, the Astros were obviously still a good team i think they probably would have won the world series regardless of if this scandal happened because their team was set up to win um but it draws scrutiny upon the organization that's for sure and it's a bad look for the mlb man i i it's and i, I do wonder how it's going to affect beltron and cora especially with cora considering that Especially with the Red Sox, because if the Apple Watch thing happened, 
and now and then they bring in Cora a year later and then he is kind of behind this whole scandal thing it just kind of makes them look really bad because it's like okay they were cheating with the apple watch and then they brought in the guy that helped the astros cheat with the trash cans so there's going to be some insanely interesting fallout from this story um and credit obviously to rosenthal and drellich for uh the piece because it is making the rounds and the crazy thing is there's not even really any denial going on that's how well researched and how well sourced it seems to be there doesn't seem to be any denial coming from any side of the aisle so we'll stay tuned to this story for sure and i will give you my thoughts as soon as it's updated but that's going to be it today for the episode of the games we play podcast thank you guys so much for watching and listening subscribe to my youtube channel if you like this content uh share it with your friends if you think they would like it as well and obviously keep on listening i will be back soon and yeah thank you guys very much have an awesome rest of your day